When someone mentions geometry to you, many might think of the shapes and measurements in the current world around us. Did you know that humans were using geometry and math thousands of years ago? Today, we get to explore the amazing math behind the indigenous people during the Hopewell period. Come behind the scenes with me with an archeologist at the Hopewell Ceremonial Earthworks to show how it's math. Doodly doodle, doodly doodle, doodly doodles and digits. Area symmetry fractions too, it's all here for you. The Hopewell Ceremonial Earthworks are large geometric landscape architecture that consists of huge squares, circles, and octagons. Not only are they geometrically precise, they also align with the cycles of the sun and the moon. Let's talk to a real archaeologist who can share some important insights on these sites. Hi, my name is Brad Lepper. I'm the senior archaeologist for the Ohio History Connections World Heritage Program. An archaeologist is someone who studies the human past, but often without access to a historic record. I'm currently standing in the gateway of the Great Circle Earthworks, a UNESCO World Heritage Site in Newark, Ohio. The Hopewell Ceremonial Earthworks are ancient earthworks built by indigenous people 2,000 years ago, and they're gigantic earthen enclosures in uh, geometric shapes, circles, squares, and octagons, but they all serve a ceremonial function. These structures are very large in size. The Great Circle is 1,200 feet in diameter. This is so large that it can actually fit four entire football fields lined up inside of it. Well, the earthworks were first encountered by Europeans. They just encountered these bewildering, gigantic earthworks that the indigenous people at the time, when asked by Europeans, said they didn't know what they were. <laughs> Well, since these are geometric earthworks, math was integrally involved in their design and their construction. While the geometric shapes are one important aspect to the math that contributes to these great structures, they are also incredibly precise. And when we look closer, they have even more hidden math within them. For example, the circumference of the great circle is equal to the perimeter of the right square. Reminder, the circumference is the perimeter of a circle. We don't know why, but these people were studying math and geometry. They created circles and squares that have the same area. When you continue to explore the earthworks, you will notice the area of the great circle is equal to the area of the hidden square within the octagon. The distance from the entrance of the observatory circle to the center of the great circle is equal to six times the diameter of the observatory circle. The distance from the center of the octagon to the center of the square is also six times equal. Other geometric concepts present are parallel lines and symmetrical mounds. As far as we know, this precise geometry on a gigantic scale was laid out by people using poles and ropes. And so they could put the stake in the ground at the center of where the circle would be built and stretch out a 600 foot long rope, in the case of the great circle, and then just walk around in a circle, just like you'd be using a compass on a piece of paper. As mentioned before, not only are these geometrically precise, these geometric shapes are also in alignment with the moon and sun. In fact, the octagon aligns with the moon every 18.6 years. It must have taken incredible planning and precise mathematical work for this to happen. The Great Circle is 1,200 feet in diameter, while the Observatory Circle is 1,054 feet in diameter. What is the difference in diameter between each circle? One thousand two hundred minus one thousand fifty four is one hundred and forty six feet. Did you get it correct? This is how I solved it. I subtracted one thousand fifty four from one thousand two hundred and I got one hundred and forty six feet. Did you get it correct? <laughs> It's very important 
to show your thinking, to show your work, so that later people, later scientists that are trying to learn from what you did, know what you did and can build a, it's a foundation that they can build on. So I think all civilizations would, would require math if they're sort of laying out property boundaries, if they're constructing any kind of architecture. Um, math has endless uses and all ancient societies, all societies throughout the world would see the value in it. My name is Brad Lepper and this is how it's math. Like this video? Find more at doodleslearning.com. Bye.